Welcome back, my fellow duplicants, to Oxygen Not Included. So today I'm going to focus on creating more piped oxygen for my base. So I have a lot of oxygen around that we've been able to create in this little electrolyzer system here. We also have a couple of infectious and polluted oxygen vents that we've been able to tap in, and that brings in oxygen to the environment. However, what I really need to do here is to supply a lot of piped oxygen to all of the dis different atmosphere docks I have around my base, because I have a lot of them. There's five over here, there's five over there, there's even more over in this spot, and there's up more up top, and then we even have some in the remote bases over here. So I need to be able to actually supply a lot of oxygen through pipes to my base. And I think the perfect place to do that is right down here because we're also going to solve another problem that we have uh, with this cool slush geyser. So I would like to use this for cooling and I kind of already have some pipes that are being built up here to do that. However, if this water gets hot, then it won't necessarily be cooling anything. So I need to be able to consume the water that goes into this area and convert that water into oxygen in the form of piped oxygen is what I'm going to call it, and supply that to the different Atmosuit dock. Now I can suck in some of this oxygen from the environment and actually supply it there because I do have things like polluted oxygen that uh, will actually give off a little bit of oxygen over time and then we can filter that back into clean oxygen. That's a little bit of oxygen, but it's not a ton and it isn't going to be everywhere. Matter of fact, even in this area up here where I'm doing just that right now, I have a little bit of a sensor right there in that gas pump. You can see this environment it doesn't take very long for it to return to 500 grams per tile, which is what I've set that to run at. So there's a couple things I need to do. One, we need to figure out just how fast this water is actually coming out of this geyser. So you can see right here that we have 4,252 grams a second of polluted water at negative 10 degrees Celsius. It's very, very cold. Look at that. Perfect. Exactly what we want. However, this doesn't give me the average output of this geyser. There's two ways we can solve this. There's a website called Oxygen Not Included Assistant where we can go over here and we can actually pick the type of geyser that we have and then we can type in the numbers here. So if we go to cool slush geyser, we can say we have an output of 4252 and then you just plug these numbers in. So it's 271, 501, you tell the cycles here. So here you can see just how much it's erupting and how frequently it is and then how many cycles it's going to be dormant for. It doesn't necessarily give you that average output of how much it's going to crank out. You can see that we have a total of 102,000 kilograms of polluted water or 103 tiles, which is incredibly, that's a lot. <laughs> but what you can do here is we can have the original temperature, which is negative 10 degrees Celsius. And then I go up to 60 because that's actually where our, our electrolyzers will output the oxygen temperature at. So you can kind of bring it up to that level. That might be a little bit too much here, but maybe we say uh, we try to target 40 degrees. I don't know. We'll see. There's definitely a lot more equipment we can throw inside of here to increase the temperature of this water. And that's, you can get some sort of idea of just how many DTUs we're, we're able to consume per activity cycle right here, which is just this whole cycle right there. You can see that we can consume, if we go from negative 10 to 40, 318,000 DTUs per second on average, or the equivalent of 26 Weezwords. At least that's what the calculator is telling me. You can definitely play with that. It's some um, useful information. To get the average output from the geyser without doing all the math, there's a mod called Geyser Calculated Average Output Tooltip. You can go ahead and enable that one. So now that I have this mod installed, when I click on this geyser down here that I've already done the analysis on, you can see that the calculated average output is 1.5 kilograms per second. And that's what that mod does right down there. So with that in mind, I now know how many electrolyzers I can run off of that one uh, cool slush geyser down there. So when I look at the electrolyzer here, you can see that I'm going to consume one kilogram a second. So it makes sense to have a couple of electrolyzers, but not like 50 down here, because there's no way I can supply enough water out of this cool slush geyser to consume, you know, a giant array of electrolyzer. So another system, just like the one I have right here, would be really useful. So let's go ahead and use the blueprint tool. I'm going to highlight all of this equipment right there, and we're just going to recreate that down below. Boom, just like that. I'll put one right over there and w another one right over here to the left. So that way I not only have my original capacity, but I have an, the additional one right over here on the right. Now I'm going to have to redo all of the liquid pipes for all of that. So let me just go ahead and cancel that before it 
<laughs> before we build it. Copying and pasting a, a blueprint is not always straightforward because it kind of depends on what you've done beforehand, but that gives us a really good starting point. Same with all these gas pipes, yep. All right, so this is going to be a fair bit of construction. These dupes have a lot of work cut out for them today. I'm gonna go ahead and try to build a little bit of ladders for them to get around. There you go. I'm just gonna clean up the power wires a little bit too. We don't need all of that. And I think I'll do this number right here, just like that. I'll probably replace this mechanized airlock with something different. You can see that I'm building kind of an access port right up here so that the dupes can come down here and do the work that they need to do. They have a lot of work. Lots and lots of work to do. Okay, so one of the thoughts was potentially using a solid conveyor to convey the thermal energy from here over to this biome over here on the right, which is like incredibly hot. Uh, the only thing about that is that it's extremely expensive to make a conveyor rail that is very, very long. Matter of fact, this would cost about 20,000 copper just to go from here all the way over here and back. However, right down here in this area, that's not too much. And what I want to do is I want to actually cool the oxygen that's coming out of this electrolyzer so that when I pump it into other environments, I don't heat up those environments. And the output temperature of these electrolyzers are going to be about 60 degrees Celsius, so it's quite hot. I don't necessarily need to cool both of them depending on where I pipe that oxygen. If I'm piping the oxygen into something like a, an Atmo suit, it's really not a big deal. But if I'm piping it into the environment, which is my base up here, well, then I have to be a little bit more careful. So my goal with this oxygen system down here is to just completely get rid of this one up top. So I can, I'm, I'm slowly working towards removing all of this. Uh, it's a great system, but you know what? I'm kind of tired of working around it. So I want to be able to run and sprint rather than kind of crawl along and try to keep that thing running. So I'm relocating a lot of that equipment right down here and all of that stuff. So you can see that we're going to have all of these ethanol distillers right down here probably consume all of the carbon dioxide right down there. Maybe that's a great spot for like a hundred slicksters at some point, but for right now, that's that's what it is. You can see that I have many different glossy Drecos now. So you can see I have a nice steady supply of plastic whenever this thing goes to run. All right, so I was able to cycle out some of the water over here that was causing problems with the water sieve. So now I'm going to try to bring in a little bit more water, try to bring the temperatures down so that I can actually go ahead and get this thing up and running. This had become too hot down here so it was outputting steam from the backside of the water sieve. Not, not exactly what I wanted, but hopefully I can introduce enough cool water over here at 54 degrees Celsius to this pool to really drop the temperature back down and make that operate. Yeah, it looks like I was able to do that. I was able to easily bring that down to 95 degrees. That's just enough. And then if we flip that back over, there we go. We can start to run this water again. So then that will run to the water sieve, but ah, it's not even plugged in. Hang on. Aha, there we go. Ooh, so, okay, so here's another <laughs> compounding problems. Here we go. So another issue here that I'm having here because of hot water um, is that the water that's going into these oxy ferns is just too hot. So it's over its maximum temperature now. So zero to 40 was its temperature and you can see that it's increasing. So those are no longer running. Not to mention, I still have all of that nice hot water inside my base. Ugh. But yet I have cooling and heating and all sorts of stuff going on inside of there. So another good reason to kind of just move a lot of that equipment out of the center of the base. Let's also improve the flow down here just a little bit. We don't need all of these solid tiles. We can go ahead and replace those with some air flows. That way we can get this carbon dioxide out of here and down to here, because I don't think I'm going to get these oxy ferns up and running again, or at least not anytime soon. But that does bring up the good topic of the temperature of the water. If it happens to be too cold or whatnot, I don't want those to run into the electrolyzers. Well, actually, I, I need to water sieve it first. I can't run polluted water into an electrolyzer. And I don't want to run water that's too cold through an electrolyze, uh, through a water sieve because that can cause problems, just like if it's too hot. So there's a couple different ways we can do that. One, we can set up like a little sensor down here just to make sure that the heat is cool enough when it's moving through the pipe. So we can use a liquid pipe element or liquid pipe thermal sensor and just kick it out if it's too cold. And that would be one really, really easy way to do that. Another very easy way, but it would also kind of go against what I'm trying to do here, is fire to just put a liquid tepidizer down here to increase the temperature to at least something like zero degrees Celsius. So that it, when, when it runs through that water sieve, it doesn't kick out ice on the backside. But then I lose 10 degrees Celsius from this cool slush geyser. So I wouldn't like that either. Um, you can set this up here in its own little puddle 
and then just run a pipe that feeds the water sieve like this. And if you run that pipe through there, well, it would actually be a radiant pipe. If you run that pipe through there, it would increase to a certain temperature, right? So you can temperature control it that way. No, no, dopes, don't build it. Stop. It was just an example. Ren, go build something else. Considering I'm already introducing heat to this thing, I think I'm just going to do the inline method and we'll see how that works. I suppose another way to cool the oxygen that's coming out of these pumps is to just run the pipes through this biome. <laughs> that'd probably, that'd be the easiest way now, wouldn't it? So just take a little bit of aluminum or something like that, boom. So when it, we kick out from this pump, we just run it through there, boom, that takes care of the temperature just like that. Cool. I think that's, I think that's a pretty good way. Ooh, they're even building the wall tiles. That's nice. Let's go ahead and build those over here too. Ah, they, those don't need to be a priority level nine dupes. I know looking cool is important, but we don't necessarily need that to be the top priority. I'm just glad you got your priorities straight, duplicates. <laughs> it has to look cool, don't it? Hope you guys have had a great week here. It's Friday, at least when I'm recording this. I was able to get out and do a little bit of golfing with my dad yesterday, so that was nice. Chased that little white ball all over the golf course. I don't do much golfing. I feel like it's one of those things that's really nice to do every once in a while, but it's just a little bit too expensive. I'm not a real big golfer. I only get out like once a year, but um, it is fun to get out and, and play it every once in a while, especially as a kind of a family thing, because it seems to be what all my uncles and everything are into, so we always go golfing. <laughs> Nicola, dude, what's up, bud? Aw, you're stuck. You're stuck in a sand trap. <laughs> Sorry. Wow, dupes, way to dump all of the polluted water on the floor. Man, I made it priority level nine. Uh-oh, that's not good. I managed to flood my steam turbine, and now I have like no power anywhere. This bad boy up here is not running. What do we got, 133? Maybe I can trick that into running. Set that to 130, yeah, not 1,300, 130. And I set it right when we go through the clock. Lag. Okay, there we go. If we set that below 120, let's see. We'll get a little bit of power out of it. Maybe that's just enough. Ha! There we go. So that provide a little bit of power to the pump. There we go. We got the natural gas generator. I stuck down a second natural gas generator, so that should help. We can reset that to 150 then. I was never able to analyze this natural gas geyser over here, so I really don't know what its average output is. Even though that mod does calculate the average, uh, even it requires analysis first and as you can see I can't really get in there right now. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Pipe is blocked. What do you mean the pipe is blocked? Ah, uh, dupes. Oh, that's not good. My dupes can't even get out <sighs> Okay, yeah, we're going to have some crispy dupes. All right, we only fried up one duplicate So that's not bad. Just fuzz butt down there and everything's up and running again. So oh, We really need to get this water out of here. That's just killing me. The one nice thing about this is that we'll be able to have a little bit of hydrogen and we can kind of use that in a couple of power generators as well. So I'll kind of do all of the water sieve and generators right here in the middle. Okay, so there we have a water sieve and then two power generators right there. And then, you know, if we just have too much hydrogen, we can actually go ahead and use that hydrogen for other things that will be a little bit more useful in the future, like liquid hydrogen for rockets and whatnot. Hopefully this is the last oxygen system I need so I don't really have to worry about that we can really start just kind of building up towards space uh, I've, it's been a little bit challenging to actually provide enough power and everything for all of these different atmos suit docks this base is very very vulnerable you know using the strategy to run out of oxygen or to run out of power because your duplicates can't really navigate um, from one biome to the next in order to do what they need to do so that's really, really slowed me up a couple of times. So I don't know. It's just kind of been a very interesting and different way to play the game a little bit here. So this kind of brings up an interesting idea for like a custom map. Like maybe you have a buildable place right here and then you have like another buildable place over there and another one down below. And then there's just the vacuum of space in between that. It's kind of, it might be kind of an interesting map to play. I think there is something similar to that on the, on the, that's, there's already like a mod for a custom map like that. However, I think it's just one biome that starts in the middle and you kind of are surrounded by space. So it's a little bit different, but similar. All right, my dupes seem to insist that they want to go in and out of these atmosphere docks. So I guess I got to provide some oxygen for those. Oh my gosh, these guys are just like kicking out the eggs here too. Here, sweep all that up, please. 
Mung it. Let's see if I could take a little bit of the hydrogen from up here and deliver it down below. So just kind of be a temporary pipe. Ooh, we'll see. I would like to get that cooling loop up and running as quickly as possible. So that's what I'm hoping to achieve by doing this little number here. Wow, these dupes can build that pretty quick, but then again, they have all their resources that they need right here, so that makes sense. They now have two ways to get in and out, so I've got some suits on the right and some suits on the left here. And this one is being supplied with oxygen that's just in this biome down here. So I'm just able to pull the oxygen from here and deliver that into the suits. And I do plan to do that uh, on all of the different exit locations in addition to what I can pump through these gas pumps as well. So all I have up here is that same sort of thing. It's kind of like a backup system, but essentially I'm pumping gas and then I'm checking to make sure that it has the right type of gas. Um, you know, so long as we're above a certain pressure. You can see the temperatures inside of here aren't bad at all. We're only talking about 12 degrees Celsius, even cooler on the left there. So nice and chilly in here. And the temperatures over here on the right are not too horrible. I've been able to pump in some water from down here, so I was actually able to drop the temperatures back down to like 70 degrees, but it was upwards of 100 over here for a little while, and it was cooking some things like that pneumatic door and whatnot. Hey now, hey now, who's on fire? Nope, don't do it, dupes. Hey, there we go. Now I have some hydrogen running around. Let's take a look at the temperatures over here on the right. E 60 in some spots. All right, it's going to take a little while, but you can see that the gas is flowing in at about 25 or so, and then it's flowing out at 76. Man, this big channel of uh, hydrogen, that's what I want to see. So then when it flows in, so it's about 70 degrees here that's not perfectly insulated. So by the time it flows back in over here, you'll see that its temperature is dropping all the way back down to 12 degrees. So yes, that's enough inside of water in order to do what it needs to do to drop that temperature back down. Okay, so you know that Kitty pretty much is the only duplicant that can live in this environment over here on the right. Um, so I'm going to try to restrict her access into the center of the base here so that she focuses on operating equipment that's down here. And I guess for right now, she'll also run over here to the left to run this equipment. But running and ranching are her two Top priorities, but it doesn't look like she has anything to ranch down here. Ah, poor Slicksters. Okay, so if I set this up correctly, she should not be able to move back into the center of the base here. So she cannot navigate anywhere inside of here, but she can navigate anywhere outside of that. Okay, good. The problem is that she can't navigate into this area because we don't have an additional Atmo suit. So hopefully Meepo will run one of those over here. Then she should be set up to just be in this environment. Oh, never mind. Pancake Game's got him. Slap down an AND gate down there so that I don't make the temperatures too hot. Please, that would be nice. What's the temperature like in here? Well, it's 60 in this one spot, but man, it's still super hot down here. Whew. We're gonna change that from gold amalgam to steel. I think there's a good reason for that too. Let me just check here. It's 40 degrees Celsius or hotter if the building is hotter. So if the building is hot, it will output that water super high. Mm -hmm. And since gold amalgam doesn't really like to have its heat dissipated into the environment, I would be outputting that polluted water at a higher temperature than I would otherwise be doing if it was made out of steel. At least that's what my theory is right now. Man, is that a hard machine to build? There you go, dupes. Mm, and that means we're going to go under the safety stock of our steel, which means our dupes are going to go ahead and start to build more of that. Yes, finally, at least she's the only one that runs that. <laughs> I guess I have even more water down here. Too much water. I'm glad I put two natural gas generators in here. Man, and I still have a thousand kilograms of natural gas inside of there. Oh, and to think I'm still running out of power. How much power does this base consume? Finely tuned machine. Okay, there we go. Yes, of course. Perform 100 tune-ups on power generators. Oh, dupes, you've been busy. I didn't realize we did 100 of those already. Average power produced. Ooh, 2,600 kilojoules at our peak. Yeah, we're now producing a little bit over 2,000. Well, I guess that makes sense. Although we are wasting a little bit of power, 71 in some cycles. I think where that's coming from is right up here. So every once in a while, this steam turbine will run because it's not being deactivated by this smart battery here. But I'm feeding it power from my grid down below. So maybe I just want to disable that for a little bit. But right now that's kind of critical because it's cooling my base. Speaking of temperatures, hey, those temperatures don't look half bad. Stuff in here is a little bit hot because I put in all that hot water. But for the rest of it, it's not bad at all. 
<laughs> Except for the super hot equipment I have going on up there. Yeah. Looks like I still have three Atmo suits. I think up here is a good spot to deliver a couple of those. One, two, three. I would really like to see what's up in this area. I know that the temperatures get hot. I mean, we're talking 93 degrees right there. It's pretty crispy. It's even, you know, we have some hot temperature up here as well. I have no idea what's over here though. None. I can see that we have a biome. We also have some iron ore. That would be really nice to kind of go over there and pick up. I'm going to need that for steel. I'm going to need a lot of steel, actually. Maybe I should deliver the suits down here. Maybe I should just make more suits. That's probably a good idea. Now I get rid of my suit making machine. Great. Ooh, some vold pups have decided to hatch out. I see one. Now, oh, where's the other? Mmm, so much food in those. It's ridiculous. Look at that. Aha, there you are. Get them dupes whenever you can. Oh, there's the other one. Haha, -ha, why are they showing up behind? <laughs> I don't know why I can see those. 16,000 calories right there. Delicious. There's another 16,000. Food for everybody. Have at it, Pancake King. You know what this base needs? It needs more shine nymphs. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a small little shine nymph ranch right here. So we can make little shine bugs and then potentially build ourselves a shine bug reactor. Because we, we just need one of those, don't we? And I've changed everything from granite tiles to window tiles because, well, let's face it, it's going to give off some really nice decor. But now I need some sort of background. And I think, uh, I think like a pinkish color would be good. What would be a pinkish color? Well, a pinkish color is insulation or thermium. I'm gonna say no to that real quick. Just, <laughs> we ain't that rich, not yet. However, coal down there looks to be kind of pinkish. So maybe I'll go with that. You might be asking why is coal pinkish? I, I, I have no idea. All right, so while my dupes have been off making that, look at what's been finished down here. Ooh, we have a bunch of electrolyzers, a lot of gas pumps, and how's this loop doing? Yes, that's what I wanted to see. Beautiful. Except for dupes, you could finish this up over here, please. Thank you. And what are the temperatures like over here on the right? Hey, that's 53 degrees. That's a little bit cooler. Yeah. And I want you to detect natural gas, please. I did put this water sieve in like the worst place possible because the polluted oxygen flows right up here to this pump. So like polluted oxygen is constantly being piped out the right. <laughs> I probably should convert it back into clean oxygen or something and I don't know maybe supply oxygen to her suit which right now apparently doesn't have oxygen that's kind of a problem isn't it kitty you're kind of having an issue aren't you uh, we'll set that to like 800 then oh dupes you forgot a couple tiles all right so I've got okay so the gas is flowing from here mm-hmm all the way over here so that's doing good Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to deconstruct this piece right here and then I'll put a little... <laughs> yes. Such spaghetti. Mmm. I'm going to then pipe it like that. There we go. So now it wants to go to the right. That way, hopefully, Kitty doesn't suffocate in her own little base. Preferably. Like that. There you go. There's the oxygen flowing to the right direction. So if this is filled up, then we'll run it over there. But whatever, I'm going to redo all these pipes anyhow. So, so long as my dupes ever get around to finishing these. Thank you. No, oh, where are you going? I'm going to go through here and mop all of this up. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right, here we go. Now the gas is flowing down there. Nice, cool hydrogen. And look at you. Hey, look at the steam turbine. It's now nice and cool. Oh, look at that. So now we're going to pump out some power. All right, there we go. Problem solved. It only took like the most aggressive pipe spaghetti I've ever built. <laughs> hey, that is some impressive little whoop de whoops going on there. Look at the liquids on top of that. Man, no tile is safe. I think I'll start on the left. <laughs> This is like already preoccupied over here on the right. Okay, so let's go ahead and plumb up these electrolyzers real quick. I'm going to use some radiant gas pipes right here, just like that, and then they flow out to the right. So that's oxygen one, two, and then we'll have three and four right over here. And once this is done doing its thing. Oh, it looks like it is done doing its thing. So let's deconstruct that. We don't need that anymore. We can just deconstruct it up here. Here, here, all the way down. We don't need all that. Okay, so that takes care of all the gas pipes here. We got some that will be extra cool. 
This one will be somewhat cool, and the one on the right will probably not be all that cool. Um, so that way I can kind of pipe these more strategically wherever I want them to go. And we'll actually make all of this insulated on the way out. Just want to make sure I do that. And now I want to pipe some water to this thing. So we've gone from here to here. We check the temperature right there. If it's not uh, above zero, then I don't want to run it through the sieve. So it'll kick out over here. Otherwise, then I have nice clean water right here. Since there's not a lot to it, we'll just kind of pipe it over there like that. Boom. Tee it up and have at it. Okay, so now to plug the stuff in so it's ready to go. Suppose I need a battery backup somewhere just to kind of turn on and off these hydrogen generators. So I think we'll slap a battery right down here and then I can run automation to that. Okay, so the one problem I can run into here with this system is that if I build up too much hydrogen, then I can block this entire thing up and stop my oxygen production. So I want to make sure that I'm getting rid of the hydrogen that I just don't have anything, f any use for. So what I've done over here is I've set up two bridges and how this works is you have one bridge like this and then you set the other up just like that. And then what I do is I put a gas pipe element sensor right here and that detects hydrogen. So the pipes go like this. The hydrogen flows in, it jumps from here to there, skipping the sensor and then continues out. But once we back this up, then we can detect, okay, we've backed up the pipe therefore send an automation signal out that's true and that turns on the hydrogen generator. Okay, dupes, you don't need to build that. So I'm just going to set one of those up on each tank over here, just like that. So there are three ways for the hydrogen generators to turn on here. One and two is if we just have too much hydrogen on either of these tanks. The last is if this power drops down below a certain level. And this battery is hooked up to the same grid that all of my heavy generators are hooked up on. So that's this big old heavy conductive wire right now, set to 10 kilowatts. Wow, look at how well this is working down here. This is now down to 50 degrees Celsius. Sweet, it was up over 100. I could probably work on cleaning that up a little bit. Now it's a little bit disgusting down there. Look at all these tanks of water I have. <laughs> So before I figure out where I'm going to pipe all of this oxygen, I'm just going to dump lots of it into the environment right down here. We'll just kind of pressurize this. That will allow me to clean out all of this polluted oxygen and all that nasty stuff in there. How's the temperatures over here on the right? Mm, not bad at all, 50 degrees, start, starting to look a little bit better. Mm, but what is broken down there? A wire. Uh, why did that wire get built there? Of course that would... Who replaced the heavy conductive wire with a just standard wire? Kitty? <sighs> well, I guess you can eat out of whichever refrigerator you would, you would enjoy. And you can play on the arcade cabinet. No, I, I still haven't denied access to all of these. Stop playing on the arcade dupes. Kitty, this is not where you sleep. Do you not know how to get back to your own base? I know you want to move into this really fancy comfy bed, but that's not yours. Matter of fact, I have what it takes now, so I could probably move my other dupe down here. Well, just about. We need some oxygen over here. You know what that means? More pipes! At this point, I'm just making it out of sandstone because, well, I have plenty of sandstone. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I love it when the gas pipes look like this. It's just madness. It really does remind me of, like, Earthbound. When you're at the end and you're facing off against Mother. They got all the little pipes and stuff that are running along the the last little room. That was one of my favorite games back when I was a real little kid. That was fun. Hey, man. These Drekos are, are doing pretty good. I have a lot of plastic out of these guys. What am I going to do with all my petroleum if you guys are my main source of plastic? Don't know, but we definitely need to get some auto sweepers down there, don't we? Mm, right there and right there. My poor dupes. They're like, just let us finish one thing. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Fuzzbutt is like, I have way, way too many critters to take care of. Oh, here you go, dupes. Make sure you sweep all this stuff up. How did you get out, Glossy Draco? What? Mm, we're up to Little Pooper the 11th now. So many generations. <sighs> you know, this room is cool, but it could use a little something more, couldn't it? What do we have for furniture that we could slow down, throw down in there? There we go. You guys can have a nice little chair. That way you can, you can sit here and just listen to the little shine bugs fly around. All right, so we have clean water that's running to the electrolyzers. We just have no power. Where's my power at? Hmm? Oh, well, it's not plugged in. That might be why. Okay. Just, uh, wow, I'm out of lead? What? Guess I have to make it out of gold then. 
Oh, yeah. I definitely do not have a gas filter on this, by the way. That is... Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We can just pump it into here for a little while. Oh, wait. That one's going to blow up. Ew. Stop. Oh, we don't need to make that out of steel. Stop. Stop, dupes. No, no, no. I said deconstruct it. Dupes. Dupes. Do what I tell you. Dupes, get over here and deconstruct that. Thank you, meep. All right, dupes, we have a problem here. We just have, like, too much water. Please don't flood my base. Temperature's over here on the right. Yeah, 41 degrees. Mmm, that's getting good. Definitely chilly in the middle. And then over here on the left, this thing's been working like crazy. Look at that. We're now down to 20 degrees in some spots, and then it has a little bit of evening out to do. <laughs> in some spots, it's super hot yet. So, uh, you know what, that'll work. Who's, uh, who's starving? Ren, you know what? Ren, you always seem to be starving. I don't know what your problem is. The middle of the base, though. Hey, look at that. Those temperatures are looking pretty good. Hmm, a nice, comfortable 25 degrees Celsius. Not bad. Okay, so there we have it. The electrolyzer system is up and running. And we can see that we have oxygen being produced on a massive scale now. Look at this, all of this oxygen flowing around. So I got to rework the pipes a little bit here. I had this kind of rigged up just to purge out all of the polluted oxygen. It looks like we've done a pretty good job of that. We just got one last chunk of polluted water that will hopefully be picked up out of out of this location. But besides that, thank you, Meep. <laughs> you heard me talking about it. Thanks. No, no, you, you forgot one. But the next thing I need to do here is rework the pipes so that the maybe the system over here on the right actually runs to, let's say, the suits that are down here and here. And then the next one kind of runs into the base and different exosuits as we kind of flow throughout wherever it needs to go. And this allows me to pretty much take all of this stuff offline because I just don't need it anymore right now. I have the power, or I've already, I've already uh, brought the power into this location, so that takes care of that. So I can go ahead and kind of repipe and rewire all of that stuff, which I'll probably end up doing tomorrow. So good deal. I think that was a very, very big step forward here. Not only did we kind of solve a problem with, you know, not having enough oxygen in pipes and all of that good stuff, but we also solved a big problem with temperature over here on the right. You can see that this is now down to 44 degrees. Very nice. Con temperature continues to drop. And we dropped the temperature down here, so that's nice and cool. And we're also dropping the temperature over here on the left. So temperatures are definitely being whipped into shape now. And we have lots of oxygen, so that's all good. All right, so there we have it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. And if this looks like the channel for you, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. A big thanks to everybody that's been subscribing here recently. All your support's been absolutely awesome. And also a big thanks to everybody that's been joining up as a Patreon supporter. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful day. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar, out.